Hello. I was just adding the link to Welcome Home if you want to pre-order it. You just saw I posted that I got these in the mail and this is just absolutely gorgeous. As you can tell, this is not the same format as the other books, so I'll show you here. If you have Mind Platter, most of you do. Um, this is what it looks like on the inside. Every page has a different reflection, whereas Welcome Home tells more of a story. So it's chapter by chapter. So last week, we covered self-love. This week, we're going to cover forgiveness, which is on page 93. I'll show you. I still haven't gotten enough of the book, so <laughs> I'll show you what the first page looks like. So I'm hoping that, as you can see, by the time you get to forgiveness, you've already read all of this about self-love, about how to get to the place where you start building a home within yourself, um, I can see some of your comments right here, and I will do my best to read them um, after the live. I did get a chance to go over the questions that you guys submitted yesterday, and I, I was there were so many questions, a lot more than I had for self-love. So I picked them um, very strategically to make sure that I covered as much as I could. Um, in Welcome Home, I do take you through the journey of how I got to a point in my life where I could forgive everyone, basically, including myself. Um, how to forgive people who never apologized, how to forgive people who don't even see that they've wronged me, how I can forgive people who, you know, believe that I deserved what they put me through. So I talk about all of that and I give you insight into how I got to that point. Um, and I give you strategies to let go. So I'll start with the first question that I wrote down and I think it's a very powerful question. Does everyone deserve forgiveness? I think as empaths, we think that if we don't forgive, then something is wrong with us. If we don't forgive, then that means we are not as good as we believe we are you need to let go of that idea because forgiveness doesn't mean anything about how good you are as a person. Forgiving someone in the traditional sense of what we believe forgiveness looks like, which is someone saying, I'm sorry, and you saying, I forgive you, it's okay. You need to let go of that definition because forgiveness is not about the person that you are forgiving. Forgiveness is about you. It's about you letting go of the pain that that person caused you and it's about you letting go of what you told yourself about yourself as a result of what that person did to you okay so forgiving them doesn't mean what they did was okay forgiving them doesn't mean that you deserved what happened to you forgiving them doesn't mean that this memory the thing that happened is just buried and it's never going to come up again and it's done and resolved with it doesn't mean that at all forgiveness is letting go it's detaching if you imagine i'll ha have like a cord right here i have my headphones which are a little bit tangled but if you imagine that you are this is you this is whatever the event that happened that you are trying to forgive is. Forgiveness is like cutting that cord, saying this event, this person no longer keeps me hostage. As much as I try to heal, they're not pulling me back. This memory, this event is not pulling me back. Forgiveness is about you letting go. That's it. You can spend the rest of your life saying that was wrong. That should have never happened. I didn't deserve that. That person wronged me and that's fine you could have that narrative in your mind but at the same time say i forgave that i let go of that so does everyone deserve forgiveness that's up to you to decide you can not as i said forgive someone in the traditional sense of forgiving them and say i don't accept your apology or i don't need your apology for me to to move on with my life. So once you make it about yourself, it's easier to just disconnect. So I hope that that makes sense. 
The second question is how do how do you forgive without an apology? So, so you can disagree with me if you disagree with me, but I think one of the things that holds us so much to the pain is waiting for the person to say, you know what, I made a mistake. I shouldn't have treated you that way. I shouldn't have spoken to you that way. It's like we want the validation of the person who hurt us to say, yes, I hurt you and I apologize and I feel bad about it. It's like we want to see that sense of remorse. I struggle with that the most, or maybe in the past I struggled with that the most. Um, just how can you not see that you hurt me? How can you not see that you made a mistake and, and intentionally? And you know what? Sometimes you will get an apology and it will still not feel like an apology because you'll get something that's like, I'm sorry you feel that way or I'm sorry it affected you that way. And it's just like you're still not fully acknowledging how what you did actually hurt me. And how do you forgive without that apology or without that authentic apology? You decide that you know what you went through. You don't need the person who in the first place inflicted that pain upon you to come and say, you have permission to feel this pain. You decide that. You went through it, right? So you make that decision. You make the decision that you don't need the apology. Your healing is not dependent on the apology. So I hope that helps. How do you, I love this question, how do you let your inner child know that it's okay to trust you again? This is a beautiful question. And this is the first thing that came to mind for me. Your inner child, if you're going back to the beliefs that you, and in Welcome Home, I take you back to the early beliefs that I started believing about myself in my childhood. If, you're, if you were to go back to that child, and say the reason you made that belief about yourself is because you were in a state where you couldn't trust yourself you had to trust and depend on others in your life on the adults in your life to make the right decision you're not there anymore you have to begin with that awareness you're not in that state anymore now you are the adult that you can trust now you're not basing what happens or what you believe about yourself on what others tell you. Now you are there for yourself. You are the one in charge of making the decisions. So in the past you were hurt because you trusted others to do the right thing. Now you need to tell yourself, I know what I deserve. I know who I am. I will trust myself. If I make a mistake, I can forgive myself for that because I know my intention wasn't to hurt myself. My intention was to take a risk, try something. And if it doesn't work, I know I can forgive myself. It's the same thing when you look at trusting other people. You say, how do I trust? You know, my trust has been broken before. This person hurt me. This person let me go. This person said this to me. This person said that about me. How do I trust new people? And it's like, how do you think it's fair to judge new people who are entering your life based on what past people have done to you. Is that fair? Is it fair for other people to not trust you because other people in their past broke their trust? So when you see it that way, it's like you can't base how you can trust one person now in the present on how others in the past have let you down. So when it comes to trusting yourself, you trust yourself without fearing that just like others have let you down, you're going to let yourself down. I hope that helps and makes sense. Um, let's move on to the next question. Um, this is a very specific one and I, I get it quite often so I think it's good to address it. I do talk about narcissism and gaslighting in Welcome Home. So if you need more of an elaboration on that, you can. I'm sure it's going to help you, but I'm going to talk about how to forgive an ex-narcissist. Don't give a person who's a narcissist a lot more power over your life than anyone else that you 
you know, that's hurt you or that, if anything, understanding how a person with narcissistic uh, tendencies or a person with who's treated you in a narcissistic way, understanding where that's com coming from, it comes from a place of insecurity, it comes from a place of wanting control, wanting power over you. So with that understanding, you can say, that has absolutely nothing to do with me. Like your need for control over someone else or your need to break someone down so that you could feel better about yourself has absolutely nothing to do with me. So the understanding of where a person who has narcissistic tendencies comes from, that's the beginning, is you need to understand the origin of it. And if the story of the origin of that is not about you, it's about them. The only thing about you is that you're an empathetic person. You complement their need to take, you because you give. You complement their need to uh, feel like they're relevant because you are somebody who constantly builds people up. It's just the way that you are. That's the only thing about you that has put you in that situation. It's not that you deserve that. It's not that you, you know, it's not to blame you in any way. It's just that's the way that these kinds of relationships work. You attract the people who need what you have to give right? Because they give you that sense of purpose. So what do you need to do? In the compassion room in Welcome Home, I talk about building boundaries. That's what you need to learn. You can be an empath, you can be a giver, you can be generous, you can be kind, loving, unconditionally to those around you and be proud of that side of who you are, but at the same time put boundaries in the face of anybody who's aiming to drain you or take advantage of you. So again, going back to how do I forgive an ex-narcissist, understand that their behavior towards you had absolutely nothing to do about you. It's teaching you that you need to start building boundaries. It's teaching you that you need to start looking at yourself. Sorry, I'm getting a call. It's teaching you that you need to start looking at yourself as worthy, regardless of whether someone is okay with you or not. Because one thing that a person who is a narcissist or who has these narcissistic tendencies will bank on is if they show you a little bit of like, I'm not okay with you or I'm not pleased with your behavior, they know that you're going to try to compensate for that. And that's very manipulative. So it, this is teaching you, this experience is teaching you that you need to stop being affected in action. You can be affected on an emotional level and say, you know what, that hurts. That that feeling of like, I, I just displeased someone, it, it feels uncomfortable, but go deeper than that. Don't say this feels uncomfortable, that means I need to change what I'm okay with, or I need to, you know, if I set a boundary and they got upset, it doesn't mean that 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 I have to change my boundary to make them not accept, uh, to make them not be upset. I'd rather upset someone else as opposed to upsetting myself when it comes to what I'm comfortable with, when it comes to what I want in my life and what I don't want in my life. So when you understand the context of where a narcissist comes from, when you understand that it has nothing to do with you and that it's trying to teach you something, Forgiveness in itself, that journey is not about saying, oh, you know what, I forgive you and what you did to me was completely fine. It's just who you are as a person. And, you know, I, I admit that I, you know, may have, um, that I could have dealt better with this situation. Like, don't fall into that spiral of if I had done something differently, then they would have done something differently as well. Don't fall into that. Just see it for what it is and know that even if you were able to control your reaction, your emotional reaction to what they did to you in that moment, there was gonna be another moment because it's a buildup of someone trying to break you down, someone trying to gaslight you, someone trying to manipulate your way of seeing your own reality. That's the goal, 
So it's going to happen with time. So don't fall into that spiral. See it for what it is and say, I'm not going to be involved with that anymore. So I hope that helps. How do I forgive when I'm angry on the inside? Don't ever equate your anger, especially if you're a woman, and I talk about this in Welcome Home, this specific thing, anger and forgiveness. Anger and speaking up for yourself. Don't equate anger with weakness. Anger is such a natural thing to experience. If you're angry about something, be angry about it. Understand that forgiving someone doesn't mean that you just, you, you know, you're this soft, like you have, you're not the type of person to get angry, you know, you're just, you're, you're that calm person that always forgives everybody that everyone can come to. If you see yourself that way, then you're not giving yourself permission to feel angry in the presence of others. But that's going to manifest on the inside with quite a bit of resentment and feeling like you are betraying yourself and you don't want to do that. That's not a good thing to sit with. So you want to forgive, but you have that anger on the inside. Feel that anger. You don't have to forgive right now. You don't have to let go right now. You will know when you're ready. Feel through everything that you need to feel through that's standing in the way of you finally saying, you know what, holding on to that pain doesn't serve me. I don't want to feel like I'm that pain is in control of me. You'll get to that point. You're not going to finish this live right now or read Welcome Home and say, okay, right now I've, I'm done. I've forgiven everything and everyone in my life. It is a journey and you have to do the work. You have to understand why you behaved the way that you behaved in certain situations. You have to forgive yourself for accepting way less than you knew you deserved at the time or didn't know you deserved at the time. You have to go through all of that. You have to, if someone hurt you and you feel angry, you have to feel that anger. I'm not saying go out and scream or you can scream if you want to, but anger looks differently for every person. Experience your anger as it is and don't feel ashamed for it. And when you're ready to let go, you'll let go. But don't think that if there's anger on the inside and you curb it because you associate anger with weakness or that it shows that you're not a good person, don't think that that anger is gonna go away on its own. It's tucked in in a corner inside of you. It's going to demand, demand to be felt by you at some point. So feel it while you can make a choice to feel it and don't wait for it to come into your life at moments where you're just like, oh wow, I really overreacted in this situation. I shouldn't have expressed this kind of anger. Feel it when you have control over it. What are little things to do daily around forgiving as to not act from a place of hurt? So I don't have more context with this question, but I'm guessing that the person who hurt you is still in your life or they somehow have some kind of influence in your life. And this is what I would say. As hard as it is, the first thing that you need to do is distance yourself from that person, whoever they are, from that environment, whatever that environment is. And if you can't physically distance yourself, mentally and emotionally distance yourself and i know this might sound like a cheesy thing to do but you could try to if you are sitting in a in a physical place where this person is around you or they're living in the same house or you work with them or whatever it is you could visualize that you are pushing that person away, pushing those memories away as they are in your presence and just, you're not affecting me. You're not affecting me. Imagine the power from within you. I talk about this in the self-love room. I talk about the idea of imagining a power bubble around you where nothing comes through. Things can hurt you and hurt your feelings. You could see that someone is trying to hurt you, but there's a there's a barrier around you where you get to say, am I going to allow this to affect me or not? I could see it. I could see that it's trying to hurt me, but I have this protective bubble of power, of self-love, of worth, of saying, I don't deserve to feel this kind of pain right now. I'm going to push it away. I've already felt it for so long. 
that's one thing that you could do. That's a very practical thing. Just close your eyes and imagine everything and everyone that feels so big in your life, so heavy, imagine pushing them away. And it's you. You're acting from a place of power. <laughs> this is a good question. This is the last one that I will address. How do you forgive someone that will never change? When I imagine trying to change someone, I think of trying to, you know, go like this to a surface or to a wall that's simply not going to change. You're the only one hurting. You're not hurting what you're trying to change. You're the only one hurting. Try it. Try going like this to a desk that's in front of you or to a wall. You're trying to change it. It's not going to change. And it's not up to you to make someone change. They have to make that decision. You could inspire someone to change. You could influence them to change. You cannot make someone change. And I'm sure you've experienced this before where you tried your best to be there for someone and they were showing you that, you know, they were changing in certain ways to, to show you that they're trying their best and that you should continue loving them and all that stuff. And then the moment you discover that they were only doing that for you, you feel betrayed because you think, oh, you were only doing that so that I could continue giving you the love that I was giving you. You're not actually authentically changing. That's the mistake that you are potentially making when you think that someone changing just for you is a good thing. Someone needs to change for themselves. The best example I can give you is what's going on right now. Do I force you to change? Do I make posts on social media saying, I can't believe that so many of you are still struggling with blah, blah, blah. No, because I understand that's a personal journey and you not changing doesn't mean that you don't want to change doesn't mean that what i'm doing isn't effective it just means that you are on your own personal journey and that's why in welcome home the very first like this what this came after i actually planned the whole book so i want to show you this so if you look at the introduction of the book it's the road to home and in that chapter, I talk about how you need to start where you are, not where I think you need to be, not where I think you are. You need to start where you are, not where you're pretending to be in your healing, where you actually are, in that place where you are unapologetically honest with yourself about where you are, where you are willing to be you know, I a few years ago, I was in a place where literally everyone around me thought she is living her best life. She's happy. She's so accomplished, blah, blah, blah. And I was dying on the inside. I was not in a good place. And I had quite a few unhealthy behaviors. So for you to be honest about yourself with where you are, that's the only way you're going to start your journey to healing. Because if you think that you need to be here, but you actually are here, 